Hello everybody. Uh, I recently found some old PC games at a local thrift shop, and I thought I might dust off the old video editing box and see what I can come up with. The game I want to show you this time is called Corridor 7. It was developed by a company called Capstone Software in 1994. They made a number of first-person shooters and licensed games between the mid-80s and mid-90s, but unfortunately none of them really stand out as noteworthy to me. So instead of really going back through the history of the company or anything like that, I think I'll just focus on the game itself. Corridor 7 is a futuristic space shooter based in the distant year of 2012. A team of US scientists has been sent to Mars and finds a small metallic object on the surface. Soon thereafter, the object is transported back to Earth and into an underground base to be experimented on. The metal object explodes and opens a rift to another world full of aliens. You're a special forces agent sent in to exterminate the aliens and reach the deepest level of the lab known as Corridor 7. The story is not exactly original or all that deep. But I guess at least it sets up why you're in this massive lab full of aliens, and then just sort of gets out of the way and lets you shoot things. The game itself is based off a modified version of the Wolfenstein 3D engine. As such, it shares the same old-fashioned controls using the arrow keys for movement, rather than the more modern WASD. It also contains only single-story rooms and hallways, because that's what the Wolf 3D engine is capable of. Now I know some of you are getting ready to type how this game is retro and I shouldn't expect bigger rooms, but there's one little problem here. This game was released after Doom. Doom had those bigger, more expansive rooms already, so in many ways this game was a step backward, and that should be no surprise as it's based on the technology of its previous game. But just because a game is slightly outdated doesn't mean it's not fun, so let's move forward. Corridor 7 is strange because unlike most shooters of the time, you're not trying to find the exit. Instead, the objective of the game is to eliminate the aliens on each floor and then return to the elevator you started at to move to the next level. This is actually a welcome change in my opinion. It added something different to the game and since your goal is to return to the place you've already been, it's much harder to get lost in the maze-like levels. Another awesome thing in this game is the mini-map. Today we take this sort of thing for granted, but compared to similar titles of the time, many of which had maps that covered the entire screen, this map is small but very usable and includes the placement of nearby enemies as well to limit the frustration. That leads me to my next point. I want to quickly talk about the small differences between the various difficulty settings. The difficulty setting you choose changes a few things. To complete each floor of the game, you need to eliminate a certain percentage of the aliens. The Captain difficulty, which is the default, requires you to kill 100% of the enemies on each floor. Each difficulty level below that takes a lower and lower percentage before you're allowed to return to the elevator and move to the next area. In addition to that, your sight on the minimap is limited in the Captain setting, but the map is fully visible on the easier settings. Corporal, the easiest setting, only requires you to kill about 10% of the enemies and shows you the entire map, including enemy locations. Also, the enemies do less damage and take more from you, so it's a pretty accessible game for any level of gamer, so long as you can deal with the old school keyboard controls. As with many old PC games, Corridor 7 came in two different formats, floppy or CD. Both versions are DOS only, with the floppy version containing 30 levels, while the later CD version contains 40. The CD-based version also includes multiplayer via modem or LAN, while the floppy version does not. The last thing that the CD version adds is CD-based audio. That's the audio that you've been hearing throughout this review. However, I personally prefer the older MIDI-type music from the floppy version of this game, which is also available on the CD as an option. So you guys can decide for yourself. I'll start a little of that music right about now. Okay, now let's get down to some of my small complaints about the game. For whatever reason, this game has a horrible, almost unfinished looking user interface. I thought this was strange, so I looked up a few videos, and sure enough, about half the videos I saw had the same dumb interface, and half of them had a nicer looking one. The back of the box for my game showed both UIs in the screenshots, but it also showed weapons that aren't in the game at all, so that was really no help. I thought maybe there was a later version released, but after messing with the options a little bit, I figured it out. 
the shitty random bars and numbers with no indicator of what they mean interface is the default, but you can change it to the other interface that gives you much more info if you simply go to the options and reduce the screen view by one size. Basically the game makes you choose between a full view or knowing what you're doing. It's kind of lame, but I didn't find the slightly smaller version to be any harder to play, so I stuck with that and I found it to be much better for me in terms of keeping track of my life and knowing what those numbers stood for. I suppose I could probably switch back now and be fine, but whatever. My last real complaint is that it took me a while to figure out what was interactive on the walls and what was just decoration. There are tons and tons of computer type things with flashing lights all over the walls. The game kept telling me that I needed blue level access. I figured it was like Doom and I went looking for a card key. It turns out that it's not like Doom at all. In fact, as I went around, I realized there was nothing on the ground to pick up at all. This is when I discovered that some of those little computer things on the wall weren't just decoration. A very select few actually give you access to more of the level. There are also terminals on the wall that give you ammo. Once I had that down, it was smooth sailing. It's sort of a pain at first, and I can see it turning some people off of the game initially if they didn't know better, but there are only three or four different designs that are actually interactive in the game, so eventually you learn to spot them. It's not too bad once you get used to it. Capstone was working on a sequel called Corridor 8, but it never passed the prototype phase because Capstone went out of business soon thereafter in 1996. A few years later, Les Bird, a programmer at Capstone, released the unfinished prototype of Corridor 8 to a fan who was running what I can assume was the only website dedicated to Corridor 7 fans. Having played the prototype, I can say that it was not very far along. It boots up as Ultimate Doom and uses all Doom and Duke Nukem graphics as placeholders, so the prototype basically amounts to little more than an unfinished Doom mod. It seems to focus on deathmatch type gameplay against a single computer opponent, in its current form anyway, but it's hard to say what it might have become further down the line. But let's go back to Corridor 7. What's the final verdict? Well, it's kind of tough. On the one hand, it's an underpowered and uninspired game even for its time, but on the other hand, it's really not too bad, and it's based off a good engine, it plays smoothly, and I found it sort of fun to blast away on the easier difficulties. So, for this one, I'm gonna have to say I'm sort of split. Is it a great game? No. Is it a fun Wolfenstein clone with a new setting? Yeah, I think it is. If that sounds good to you, then by all means try this game. But if you grew up in an age of more modern shooters, I do not feel that this game will offer you anything substantial to remember. Thanks for watching.